Three years ago, I received an email from Putin himself, or at least what appeared to be his own email address. A hacktivist group claimed to have hacked Putin's email, and of all the things they could have used it for, decided to send me a message. The email landed straight in my Gmail inbox. The sender address checked out, putin at kremlin.ru, the actual Russian presidential website. On the surface, everything appeared to be legit. And for a brief, very brief moment, part of me wondered if this could be the real deal. For context, it was just a few days into the invasion of Ukraine, and I'd already received a few genuine emails from actually hacked government accounts, sent by hacktivists desperate for recognition and attention. So this seemed to follow the pattern. But of course, the email was totally fake. If you click the three dots in the corner and hit show original, you'll be able to see the email headers which tell us exactly where the email really came from. Importantly, we've got a neutral SBF result. And on the face of it, neutral doesn't sound too bad, but it means that whilst the IP address that sent this email is not allowed to send emails on behalf of Putin, technically speaking, it's not disallowed to. Google recognizes that the sender address is probably spoofed and even tells us, but it just lets it into my inbox anyway. And here's the thing, if I didn't know to check the email's headers and know how to read all this jargon, I just wouldn't have been able to tell that this email was fake at all. So what's going on here? Well, welcome to the confusion using world of email security, brought to you by PowerDMARC. So this spoofed email was allowed straight into my inbox because Putin's own domain implements poor email security. It's not like Kremlin.ru was hacked, not in the slightest, but simply bad configuration created a situation where anyone could send emails that appeared to be coming from their domain. And it's not just the Kremlin. Only a few years ago, the White House themselves was vulnerable to email spoofing, and to this day, North Korean hackers continue to send spoofed phishing emails coming from domains that don't properly implement good email security. And the consequences of having someone hijack your email, sending messages that appear to be coming from yourself, can be pretty devastating, something that I unfortunately have a little experience with. Only a few years ago, someone sent emails impersonating me, contacting companies claiming to be representing the satanic channel, looking for sponsors. One company fell for it and sent the scammer thousands of dollars in hacking gear in exchange for a few videos. Now, I didn't lose any money, but my reputation was definitely harmed, and for a whole two years, Years, the victim company thought that I was the one who scams them, until my name randomly came up in a conversation and I gave them the bad news. In this case, the scammer wasn't spoofing my email, rather they were using a lookalike email address, so no amount of email security from me could have prevented this. But it just goes to show that you don't have to be a big fish to become a target, and I'm sure if they could have spoofed my address, they probably would have. But anyway, when it comes to email security and preventing your email from being spoofed, there are three main concepts you need to know about. SBF, DKIM, and DMARC. Each of these represents a record that needs to be added to your domain's DNS settings, so that when a server is receives an email, supposedly from your domain, it'll use these records in order to determine whether the email is legit. So an SPF record determines which IP addresses are allowed to send emails on behalf of our domain, and importantly, how to treat emails that come from different addresses. A dash all qualifier means that all other addresses will fail this test. At the time I received that spoofed email from Putin, supposedly, the Kremlin.ru domain was likely using a question mark here, which means IP addresses not on the list were treated as neutral, allowing the spoofed email through. A DKIM record contains a public key that recipients of our emails will use to verify whether the email has been signed with our corresponding private key. And a DMARC record determines what's going to happen to an email if either the SBF or DKIM checks fail. Should no action be taken? Should the email be quarantined, which means it'll likely end up in spam? Or should the email be totally discarded? Now, you can absolutely set up all of this manually, and there's a lot of resources out there on that, but today I'm going to be showing you how to do it with PowerDMARC, who are very kindly sponsoring this video, helping to keep the lights on and fund my girlfriend's Squishmallow addiction. PowerDMARC has a 15-day free trial for their basic tier, but they also have a totally free tier for personal use. So after creating an account, you'll want to head over to the setup wizard, which is by far the easiest way to set all of this up in just a few minutes. Just type in your domain. For me, I'm going to be using satonic.net. Now, one of the most important things in DMARC is the policy type. This determines what's going to happen to the emails that fail checks. By default, the loosest settings are used, and this is actually quite useful because it allows us to test our configuration and make sure everything is working before we ratchet up the strictness. 
The setup wizard will also automatically generate a couple of email addresses for reporting purposes. Now we don't have to check these email addresses at all. This is all abstracted away from us. All this does is help the platform automatically generate these lovely looking reports, which will help us understand whether our configuration is working as intended and where potential threats might be coming from. Under forensics options, I'll leave this as default, which means reports will be generated if either DKIM or SBF don't pass. And the last step is to add the DMARC records to our domain's DNS settings in the form of a CNAME record. Since GoDaddy is my registrar, I'll do this through them. It's a simple copy and pasting exercise really, just copying the name and value. We'll also leave the TTL as default and hit save. And that's pretty much it. We'll hit validate just to make sure it's good. And it was that easy. So essentially what we've done here is just delegated responsibility of our DMARC record to power DMARC. The record itself is really easy to understand. We've got a DMARC record, P equals none, meaning we've got the loosest settings possible. We've got those email addresses for reporting purposes. And the last bit just means reports will be generated if either SBF or DKIM fail. Next, let's head over to Domain Health to see how we're getting on. DMARC is good to go, but we're lacking on pretty much everything else. SPF is next on our list, so let's tap on that. Remember, an SPF record lists which IP addresses are allowed to send emails on behalf of our domain. And just as we did with DMARC, we're going to need to add a record to our DNS. This delegates responsibility of our SPF records to power DMARC. So tap Enable Setup and copy this, then head over to your DNS settings, and now we need to create a new TXT record. For the host, we'll enter an at, and then paste it into the value, click Save, and back on Power DMARC, we can hit Refresh DNS Status. Now, it can take a few hours to update. Usually, it's just a few moments, but this will propagate itself and sort itself out. And adding these records to our DNS is just a one-time thing. This is what makes Power DMARC so powerful, because then we can edit those records dynamically. If you have multiple domains over various registrars, managing all of this manually quickly becomes a headache, which is where Power DMARC comes in. Right, so our DNS is activated. That only took five, 10 minutes off camera. So let's set up the SPF record. For this, we'll need to know which services or IP addresses we want to send emails on our behalf. Now, I'm just going to be setting up this domain to use with Google Workspaces. So I'll just type in and select Google. You'll notice no IP addresses are added to our SPF record. Rather, it says include Google. All this does is points to Google's SPF record and pulls their SPF rules and adds them to ours. Since the IP addresses for Google servers are going to change, there's no point hard coding them into our SPF record. We want to pull them dynamically. Now everything's looking good, so let's hit save. And that's that. If we go back to domain health, you can see now we've got DMARC and SPF all good to go. Next on the list is DKIM. As before, the setup guide is super simple, but I think you get the idea at this point. And other than just improving security, there are some nice little perks to Power DMARC. BIMI is a good example. By configuring a BIMI record, recipients of your emails will see your logo in their inbox, adding a nice little layer of professionalism. But one of the great benefits of Power DMARC is their reporting solution. This is really important because it gives us a lot of data which allows us to debug a configuration. We can easily see if any legitimate emails are failing verification checks, and we can tell if bad actors are trying to send malicious spoofed emails on our behalf. The easiest way to check if you might benefit from Power DMARC is to head over to their domain analyzer tool. I'll link this in the description. It's totally free to use, no need to sign up or anything. Let's try kremlin.ru and see if anything has changed since I received that spoofed email. Okay, so they have a valid SPF record, but no DKIM and no DMARC. So there's definitely some room for improvement. But if you're watching Vlad, you'll be happy to hear that Power DMARC has a 15 day free trial. And if you've got a few domains to manage, Power DMARC is powerful. But if you're an MSP and have many domains across multiple clients, then it's essential. Power DMARC's full stack authentication suite makes it easy to manage a multitude of user accounts and domains. And better yet, their white labeling option allows you to fully customize the the look and feel of the interface to your brand and colors. You get customizable email alerts and a support page, fully integrating the suite into your business. So that's Power DMARC. Big thanks to them for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.